Hey, what's up, you two? I'm Dewan Lightfoot. I'm here with an awesome guest. He has eight CCIEs, along with a ton of industry experience. He's been a manager. He started from the ground up. I have none other than the one and only Neil Moore. <laughs> hey there, Dewan. Thanks for having me. <laughs> hey, what's up, Neil? I thank you for coming on. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. And I always, uh, I, I follow your lab every day, so uh, it's always uh, good to come and help out the community. Thank you. So I spoke, well, I put a post on LinkedIn not too long ago about um, getting turned down from a job offer. And when I posted the post, you re you reached out and said anything you can do to help. And that really meant a lot. Um, oh, yeah. Not a problem. Yeah, it, uh, it uh, all, it, as with everything, uh, I've been interviewing and interviewing on both sides. So the interviewer and the interviewee for for a really long time. So I'd be glad to help you out. Yes. So uh, with, with that post, um, we kind of came to a discussion about, you know, doing a live stream and putting mm -hmm. something out that will help the community. And that was deconstructing the job hut. Mm -hmm. You want to share a little bit about that? Sure. Um, even uh, when I, there, there's a couple of facets that go into it. Uh, I treat uh, job hunting very similar to how you would do a, even a, like a certification run. So I pick my, uh, uh, what, and when I, I don't change jobs very often. And uh, so, and what happens is that when I do, I will research where I want to go, what what fields I need, and then build a, and in a sense, build a map from where I am now and where that I would want to be to order to get the job. And then the next thing is to be able to keep the job uh, after that. So it, it's like a map of sorts to um, from from where I need, where I am now, you know, brutally honest with myself to where I need to be uh, to get it. That that's deep that you mentioned. Um, what you need to keep the job. I don't think a lot of people think about that, especially when you reach, let's say, the senior level. Um, yeah. uh, how do you, how do you determine the map of to get the job and then to keep the job? Yeah, I can. I'll I'll go way back in time. So, uh, I, like on my LinkedIn page, one of the first ones on there is uh, Caterpillar, and I would have uh, at that time. That was pre. I think all I had was a Novell cert at that time. Um, maybe some SEO uh, uh, Xenix uh, certs as well. I mean, it was different, different field, but uh, and and a lot of the tools that we have now didn't exist. But I, I still use the same same style. So when I applied to Caterpillar, um, it was not a. I already had a, a background on what I wanted to do, and I needed to level up to uh, to work with with bigger equipment. And I knew that they had uh, it's an operating system called HPUX or HPUX for the folks that use it. And I knew that my skill set wasn't there in order to, to, get the, to get the job. So that was one where I took my current skill set, then I learned HPUX or HPUX. And then, uh, then I actually reached out to some of the people that already worked at Caterpillar in the same section. They didn't know me. Uh, from anybody, uh, and then just asked them, um, you know, what they did on a, on, you know, a kind of on a daily basis. And from there, I used that to build one, my, the knowledge that I needed so that I didn't study things that didn't matter to them. And I had a, you know, what, when you reach out to the people and you have a good idea that those are the people that you would end up interviewing with anyways, whether they remember that you called them or not. Uh, so, that's in that map. That's where I use that to, uh, uh, and this would have been back in the '90s, so quite a ways back. But I use that map to create the um, uh, the thing, and and I got the I got the job there, and and then I moved to Caterpillar and worked on I worked on a lot of stuff that doesn't really exist anymore, and that's uh and that's the other thing is that you're constantly evolving after that. Uh, otherwise, you you know I'd be working on things quite frankly that. And nobody's even heard of anymore, and you know there wouldn't be a there wouldn't be an employment <laughs> for uh, for keep it, for doing it. Right, right. Yeah. Now, here's a question. So sure. when you when you are learning a technology that you actually have not done in the past, mm -hmm. 
um, in your past skill set, let's say on your resume, how do you apply the skills that you're learning, um, let's say in the lab, lab every day, you know? Mm -hmm. How do you apply that to get the job? Let's say they're looking for you to learn um, NSX or something like that, and you've never mm -hmm. done it, it's not on your resume. A lot of times I get a question about, can you put the lab experience on your resume? What are your thoughts and how do you say, uh, recommend someone go about that? Right, uh, so in order to, to put the lab experiment or uh, any anything that you lab on uh, your resume, it has to be turned from knowledge into experience. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll take, uh, I guess we'll start with the NSX one. First, if somebody, if I was gonna go do a job interview for VMware's NSX, uh, there's actually two tracks. So there's the NSXV and there's the NSXT. So again, this is helping to build that map as you as you move along. Right. Um, for NSX, and, and I'll just stay with uh, T because that's my that's my current one I'm working with. Uh, I would look to see how I could meld, say, my what I'm doing on 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 the Cisco side of the house with NSX. So by pulling up the the uh, uh, in a sense, you could pull up the certification blueprints for both of them and um, look for commonality. So uh, OSPF and BGP uh, or static routing. So you go, oh, okay. Now I've got now I've got something that I can glue to. Right. Uh, so I'll take my Cisco knowledge and I'll take NSX and I'll work on that little bit in the middle so that I can make BGP work. And this uh, and this again it, it, from uh, uh, everybody's perception of BGP is is different. Uh, so. Uh, you have to make sure who you're interviewing with that you are on the same um, same uh, wavelength, I guess, uh, for BGP. Right. Uh, in that, if you studied NSX and you studied Cisco and you study merging them together, and then you're uh, somebody just sees N BGP on your resume and they start asking you about how do you set up a uh, NetConf and BGP link state. And you're like, whoa, 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 <laughs> that's, that's not even close to where are you getting this stuff from? Right. Uh, and, and that helps to uh, uh, make sure that you keep it in an area that you know the full path. And, and, and to, to bring it back is by doing the labbing every day, you know that you can't take it uh, just to that OSPF part that I was talking about in the, you know, bringing the, bringing the two together, setting up your area zero, all of that stuff, you need to make it a full picture. So you have a web server that's deep inside of NSXT, and then you have a, a client that's sitting on the other side of that Cisco router, and then you know how everything works in the middle, and then you break everything that's in the middle, and that gives you that experience uh, without having to do it for real on a uh, on a customer site <laughs> yeah uh, yes so you know one of the things that i found about doing that in a live env environment is rabbit holes um since we're kind of on the mm -hmm. subject <laughs> yeah. um how do you um stop yourself from going into those rabbit holes during your lab time because i spend hours um building really complex labs and then all of a sudden I have an issue that just will not work. Um, <laughs> let's say that web server that you said deep into, mm -hmm. your, <laughs> yeah, deep into yeah. your your network, getting this web server to stand up that has nothing to do with what you're trying to learn. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's uh, 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 there, there's a couple of there's a couple of uh, there's the building phase and then there's the experience phase. Right. So um, I used to take uh, uh, like uh, INE's uh, labs uh, that they have. They're very Cisco centric, uh, and I and I knew the configuration. I'm, and it, I would then take a component of that configuration. Um, I, I would, first I get it working as it was, and then I would replace components. Mm -hmm. So that way I'm not working on a on a on a on the whole thing at once. Uh, because it, it, at the end of a whole CCIE lab, I mean, you're, you're fried in the brain anyways from right. putting in eight plus hours, but the, the, um, you have, it, 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 there, like I said, there's a building phase and there's an experiment, an experimenting phase. So, uh, 
if you're having problems with the web server from mine, you would just put something that you could ping over there. You know, just just something. It doesn't even just you know, all you're doing is testing layer two, layer three at that point. Um, uh, and then try to limit yourself to 10, 15 minutes on things that don't matter for what you need to meet your objective, so to speak. Got it. Got it. Got it. So we're talking about live and, and we're talking about building a map to get to where you want to be in your career. Mm -hmm. Before right. we move any any further, for those beginners, where should they start in networking <laughs> in today's um, landscape in like 2019? I, I, I don't know if uh, Mike Hilton told you, but I actually met him uh, <laughs> when he was doing um, at, at, if you want beginner, I've got your beginner for you. Um, I actually uh, went to high school in McAllen, Texas, uh, oh, wow. and and uh, I was I think I was flying through to Mexico City, or I was I was flying south for something, and I I, I have a house in McAllen, uh, an old family house, so I stopped there before I jumped uh, to uh, the re down down further south. So. Uh, I was uh, talking to the to the folks, and they said, "Yeah, we have a CCNA uh, boot camp." And yeah, sure enough, uh, Michael Hilton was sitting over in the corner oh, uh, wow. at uh, at one of them. Where I went up and I whiteboarded everything that uh, he, he probably saying. I, I'm saying almost the same thing that I said, uh, uh, you know, for for how to to map where you need to, um, and studying studying small chunks, and then like. Uh, and, and uh, like you're learning ICMP, you know, you start with a ping, make sure that you understand how ping works and all of the different packets that are going back and forth. And you, you know, enhance, enhance, enhance uh, as much as you need. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's that level. But uh, for, uh, for Michael, it was, uh, well, he, he was a little too young. I think he still is. Uh, too young to, uh, <laughs> to, to get a, to, to, to uh, get a, a uh, job, even though he's got the the smarts and the drive, uh, you know it's uh, it's one of the ones that uh, he'll have a ton of experience by the time that he reaches. it. But X said he he was to me he was just in the right place at the right time and actually took what somebody was teaching him uh, because that's the other thing is uh, I'm sitting with 10, 15 years of of mistakes and successes. So you know some people take it, some people don't. Uh, you know I I try to get as much as I can so. That I don't find out that I did something for five years, and uh, you know that was uh, not where I should have gone. Right. But um, back to your back to your question is, uh, it's it, it depends. It, it, it's one of the ones, and it's, it it requires a lot of discipline. Uh, I've been doing computer stuff since I was like seven, eight years old. So I mean, like, I mean, I actually went professional. As in, I was making 25 bucks an hour uh, when I was 13, 14 years old. So um, I was doing systems. And just to give you as an example, I just found systems. There was lots of people doing Novell. There was a lot. Oh, Microsoft wasn't out yet. Isn't that sad? But uh, uh, so what I did was I was like, oh, okay. So this 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 Unix thing. There was no Linux yet. So this Unix thing. It, it's everybody seems to be making like. $100 an hour. Mm -hmm. So I went and picked just one flavor of it and started learning it enough to make 25 bucks an hour. And in high school, that's pretty good money. So even today, it's still good money. So um, uh, yeah, so that that was, uh, but but it was a lot of discipline. I, 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 I found somebody that would let me log into their system and they would lend me their manuals. Uh, I mean, it's all about networking. Uh, and being very specific on on what you're after, and and the other thing is that the uh, that I learned is there's a difference between a uh, a mentor and a sponsor. Mm. So a, a mentor is usually one direction. So it's like I give like to Michael, this is you know go do this kind of stuff. Right. A, sp if you, a sponsor can also be a mentor, but a sponsor is somebody that will vouch for you <laughs> to go work somewhere. Right. So, you know, so you, you're building that mentor slash sponsor relationship and a, and a, and a sponsor is bi-directional. You, you know, you help them out, they help you out and, and uh, you know, that kind of stuff. 
and that helps you to uh, also advance. It's it's in, in a way it has very little to do with networking and all of this, but it's just building that philosophy of of making your network so that those opportunities that are out there, uh, you know, can present themselves. Yeah, um, it's, I like the way you put that with the sponsor. Um, that that's one of the things that draws me to being a network engineer is the is it's kind of like connecting people you know mm -hmm. you connect the networks and bringing everything together and that's what i like to do not only in tech wise but just with relationships so mm -hmm. yeah you know, yeah you, you, you just don't know where um uh i mean it could be explaining to a non-technical person uh, how something works on the internet like i mean it's it's a deep subject but just saying explaining how netflix works um uh, in a it, to a non-technical person and then explaining it deeply technical <laughs> right. so uh you know you, uh, either both of those may be required to to get your job hmm. they may put you in front of hr and they ask the same question and and all it would take is the hr person to say you know I, I the guy's really deep technically but he made me feel kind of stupid hmm. you know and and then and, and, and that just <laughs> your interview <laughs> so you know that's that that it's one of those ones that you uh, you you got to know your audience and you know bring it and know how to shift the conversation again eye on the map right your map is to get over to to, to get a position or uh, and then you know of course keep the position but to get the position first so that uh, you know and and you, you will be working with these folks in the future so you don't want to be that uh, the the their yes or no is is so final in like 30 seconds that you've got to be able to gauge the people that you're you're talking to uh, and then move it up and down uh, for for some of the folks uh, I would put it this way uh, is if I'm a, a CCIE uh, and I'm interviewing a junior candidate uh, I, I wouldn't use CCIE level conversation with them because that's not where they're at yet. So I don't want the person, I, I want the person to work in our group. So I wouldn't want them to feel the exact opposite, that for them to feel like they have nothing to contribute as well. So it's like making sure that the audience on both sides, that, that you know who you're talking to, um, uh, again, like similar to the to the Netflix question, if I was in HR and I asked that question, I would I would expect one one uh, uh, you know way it would go. I would expect the CCNA to know a little bit more, and then me being in NFV, which is network function virtualization with service providers. Oh, that's going to be one crazy question. So <laughs> <laughs> that could be a that that question is is is, is could be the whole interview uh for for a person to explain network so, virtualization so that's yeah. um networking in the cloud um it, it's it, it's a lot of stuff that doesn't make google but uh uh we'll oh, I, I guess for an example we'll use this uh google hangouts uh as as an example right. there is um there's a there's a video component there is a voice component there is an instant message component uh, to that, so uh, and if we were if we're recording, that would act, could actually be going to a, a, a completely different server that that's actually brought our two networking streams together, uh, our networking our video and our voice streams together. Each one of those are a separate uh, VNF, so a virtual network function, and then they can't combine together to to make the whole experience. I see. Lots of lots of stuff going on, and and like I said, in that conversation, is like if a person says, "Well, what would that look like in Wireshark?" Well, let's take a look, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, 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 and then and then and then again, then the Wireshark question would be depending on where you are in the network. So right. it would be if it was from my side, I'm not going to see the recorder, but. Uh, if I was at, at you know Google or wherever these these uh, RTP streams are coming together, uh, they would be able to see all of that stuff going on. Right. So um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it, 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 it's uh, all in the perception, uh, you know, and the perceptive or not perception that the uh, yeah, out of work the perception of the uh, of the question to 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 the person that's asking it, and then if you're interviewing, uh, uh, try to pull the question because you you have you have a lot of uh, the things at your uh, disposal. You have the uh, one you have your your resume. Uh, you have the job description. Uh, uh, you have who you, you hopefully if you if you ask they don't give it to you automatically. But if you ask, you usually know with a day in advance on who's interviewing with you. Um, so you can look them up on LinkedIn, and you're like, you look up on LinkedIn, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's like a guy with like six CCIEs, and well, wait a minute, let me go look and see when he got his last CCIE. Oh shucks, he got that in you know 1999 or something. Right. So he's not gonna have that knowledge. He may have the CCIEs, but he's not as unless he's updated. His his knowledge level is going to break or break off at a particular particular year. Right. So and then it becomes his knowledge becomes um, environmental. He knows his environment very well and he would use that as his point of reference and so that's why again on your map you know the company that you're going to the the like you know that they have cisco networking in there because you looked up online and you go oh look everybody that works there has got a ccie or a ccmp so my chances are pretty good that this is a cisco network you know, you show up to a Cisco dance and they're all Juniper. <laughs> so, uh, you know, <laughs> that's a, makes it a little, you know, makes it makes it interesting. But uh, again, it's it's more on the map. If if I was uh, uh, if I didn't have Juniper experience, but I was a new person coming in, then I could say yes, I I know how the protocols work, and I know you know, and I'm willing to learn new dialects because to me routers. Uh, OSPF is OSPF. Uh, you know, somebody's gonna he's gonna get me for that one. But Wireshark never lies. So uh, you know, keeping that stuff in mind is that uh, uh, not every you know people didn't steal OSPF from each other. So like, and I'm picking on Juniper a lot today. So Juniper wrote their own OSPF or BGP, and Cisco wrote their own OSPF or BGP to to the standard. If if you know the standard. Then you can speak either either OSPF. You just need to change ha what the commands are to get what you need done. Sure. And sure. and that's from a from a brand new person. I, I know it's a lot, but you research where you're going, and then you go for that. Uh, uh, it'd be a classic waste of time to go and learn Juniper when it's a solid Cisco shop. Right. You know that's uh, and that's help that helps keep you focused uh, on uh, on what you want to work on. So uh, uh, is what you're saying is a, a, a lot of the things that I see uh, across um, my channel and in the comments is people focusing on like what they see outside of their organization. So mm -hmm. I'm saying focus on what's in front of you and that's and what's on your map and where you want to go. Is that mm -hmm. what you're saying? Right. And, and if you've uh, and again, you've got the two phases, right? You've got your job and you want to keep your job. Your job may be somewhere else, but you want to keep that job. <laughs> so, uh, so it's like, and that's where you start. Um, because of my field, I'll see. Like, believe it or not, there were other ones other than OpenStack, and I'm like it's totally random, I know, but there were other ones out there other than OpenStack, CloudStack. There, there, there's a whole ton of them. Right. Only OpenStack really made it. So it's one of those ones that when you're talking, I'm kind of looking at your questions that, that, that came in, is that if you're going toward SDN and virtualization, there are a lot of options out there. So uh, one of the really cool parts about it is that if you started SDN, oh, three, four years ago, there was a lot more choices out there. Right. A lot harder to pick the ones that weren't going to go for you. Right. So it's one of the ones it's like, okay, uh, from an SDM perspective, uh, uh, do I uh, couple it onto my new technology that I know, 
or do I consider this a clean break and I'm there's no no transition because right now it'd be like you've got your traditional networking and then you've got SDN uh, or overlay I, I, I kind of I collectively call it overlay networking right. uh, is that do you want to stay uh, do you want to run the cloud or run the SDN which is the underlay so your OSPF your BGP your layer 2 all of that still stuff is there or do you want to uh, run only the 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 overlay or do you want to be that person and which is the very rare part is do you want to be that person right in the middle that knows how the underlay works and how to hook it to an overlay and so, that would be the person that knows like that conf and how to uh, <laughs> <prevent> it. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean there's so much like i said it's it's one of the ones i could i could like just rattle off acronyms that uh, I probably have to give you a, a guide that uh, they, because it becomes a uh, even on like um, uh, uh, like uh, there's so many of them out there that uh, like and I'll just say for example like in NSX uh, and in a NSXV and NSXT NSXV uses VXLAN as its overlay and NSXT uses Geneve hmm. so they both, and, and, and just right there, I could uh, go, okay, I could come into environments that are transitioning from one to the other. Now, I don't have to be like a rock star on that, but if I have just a, and this brings up from doing the labs, if I know how to make it so a person could transition from one to the other, from NSXV to NSXT, while it's a short lived, uh, um, unless you're, you know, in a professional services organization, that would be short lived skill set, but it gives you something that allows you to transition uh, onto the next phase of what you want to do uh, in your career. Right, right, right. Man, you touched a lot of great points in that um, segment. I kind of want to piggyback back to. The resume portion. Mm -hmm. Sure. So you being a hiring manager, what makes an eye-catching uh, resume? Is it certifications? Is it skills? Is it degrees? Is it experience? Um, what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, first, uh, you know, I know this is going to probably sound a little depressing to some folks, but I'll get to where it's going. Um, uh, technology is always a point in time hmm. so first thing I'm looking for uh, is that I'll I go out and I hit I, I a person comes onto my uh, comes onto my desk uh, for a position I met I, I I'll take the, the and it's already been through a couple of filters even before it gets to me then I take that take that uh, res, I take the job entry and I take the uh, I, I take their resume and then I look back and forth uh, you just have them up on the screen at the same time, uh, and then I look for uh, the the skill sets that kind of match what I'm looking for. So, and it's, it's it's different for everybody, but I'm I'm looking for um, like uh, Linux experience, networking experience, and, and VMware experience. Uh, not I haven't gotten to the part where it would like how they all intermix yet. Right. Then I take what they have and then I go out and uh, Facebook and see how with people because I'm customer facing so I have to I have to uh, see how they interact with other other people uh, on on the on the and, and, and on Facebook you know you've got the the etiquette thing going okay Facebook has one way and uh, and LinkedIn has another uh, and I, I, I actually make sure to keep uh, one separate from the other one. You know, I got my family picking on me on Facebook all the time. They don't pick on me as much on LinkedIn, which I'm, I'm happy about. But, uh, but, but that's 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 the second phase that I go through. Um, and then I'll tell you exactly why I do this. Is sometimes they absolutely stink at writing a resume. Absolutely stink. Uh, but I go out and I look on LinkedIn and I'm like, oh my gosh, 
You know, <laughs> this person just stinks at writing resumes. <laughs> 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 I don't, I don't do the, you know, <laughs> and throw it in the trash. Uh, you know, so I'm like, uh, yeah, wait a minute, this, this doesn't match. <laughs> so, you know, and then it's like, okay, we're, we're going to put him into the, in, into the first phase. Now, uh, I, I said maybe I'm an exception to that rule because um, I'm still deep technical and I, uh, I'm a people manager. But um, that, that's, I, I know that I would lose a lot of great talent if I didn't do that because they're, they're fantastic on the keyboard fantastic at doing architectures, fantastic at documentation, but a one sheet of paper, you know, makes it so that I, you know, they can't reach their potential. You know, that's just, that's a, I, 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 you know, I, it's, it's not in my nature. So, uh, you know, it, it, from that perspective, but if you're coming uh, to get past that, um, that, a, Wait, so that was, like I said, I mentioned before, and I was making sure I came back to it, is that it's already been filtered a little bit before it comes to me. Right, right. So to get past that initial filter, that's where you, um, uh, you have to match uh, people that aren't technical. They, they, they are not technical people. So you take the, the, the job, you have to take the job, um, the job description and your resume and a cover letter. I mean, if you don't want to touch your resume, but if, if the cover letter has to have things in there that they can point to one and then point to the other and go, yeah, yeah, this, this person has this over here. I was looking for somebody with ESX uh, uh, experience and, and voice over IP, just picking two out of the air. Right. And, Okay, in their cover letter, they said, I worked on a uh, call manager, which is on an ESX server, uh, and, and, you know, on, on a VMware NSX, or on a VMware ESX server, and, you know, and they're like, oh, yeah, they do match, <laughs> and then it gets sent on. You know, right. the, uh, there's, there's another phase, uh, and I haven't seen the algorithm myself, but it's, the uh, uh, little AI program they tell me, or I think it's a keyword one, I but I don't know. But uh, you know, it's like they, it has to figure out how it, that that it, like um, on some of the jobs that we put out there, there may be 500 people that that apply for it. Right. So they they it down to about 10, uh, mm -hmm. and that's and that's uh, it, there's a lot of folks that apply for a position that. Um, that don't make it past that initial filter. And that's what I'm kind of helping you out with is the, is that first filter uh, to get past. And okay. then, and then we get the 10 um, because uh, from my side, I interview all 10. So mm -hmm. I have to put, if it's going to be 10 people, I would have to put uh, two days uh, on their, uh, you know, two days, one day to prep, and then uh, write my notes, and then to make, uh, again, from my perspective, um, I have to make sure that I don't uh, rabbit hole, as you were saying, I don't rabbit hole the questions, uh, because I'm personally after a culture fit uh, more than a, uh, ambition and culture, much more than uh, a knowledge, uh, uh, you know. It's good to have the knowledge, it's great to have it, because right. you have to get running fast, yeah. But uh, if, 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 if the person, it, it, it's one of those ones, it's like five seconds. I mean, if a person just, uh, it, and I, I don't tell them, like, if they research me, like, you know, you, you've done where they know that they're coming in with this, you know, this guy that's got all of these certs and all of these kind of things. But if they don't uh, research uh, like me and, right. and like have questions for me, that uh, would gel with what we have going on that, that match with the, with the job description. Uh, that's where it gets really hard because if the person is really, really smart, but then they applied for a, uh, an NFV position and they are 100% routers <laughs> or switches, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like this, 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 this position, you don't have the, the, 
a way to for me to transition you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So. You gotta have some type of transferable skills in order for that. Or 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 on the journey of jumping. Uh, and, jump, okay. and I'm and I'm gonna pick on the SDN. Say that you're. Um, I was this guy sitting at Caterpillar. I don't know, I don't know why I'm picking on Caterpillar. Um, <laughs> but say that you were heavy heavy duty Cisco uh, only, and you did. Like I said using your products or your your thought process. Every day I learned how in my own home lab how to add on NSX or NSXV or any even GRE is still is still an overlay as far as I'm concerned it is <laughs> the, original, the original overlay <laughs> right yeah I used to tell people I can't I, I could solve I could solve anything with GRE and BGP right. don't think I could <laughs> so uh, you know it, it, it's one of those things is that you you're able to take I would see that as uh, somebody that's ready to go uh, right. They're they're locked in uh, uh, a particular role. They have this other skill set. I I would ask a few probing questions. It's a oh yes, I know NSXV, and it'll be like, wow, what version were you using? Hmm. See, that's my probing question. Right, right, right. And if and if they answer, oh, I'm using 6.4.4, and I'm like, wow, that's that's cool. How big was it? <laughs> right. you know, you know, yeah, right. <laughs> and then because I, I if and if they give me a couple of things like at the end of that, he says, "Yeah, I put a web server at the end of it." <laughs> and I, oh, okay, so did you get BGP running? Heck, no, I did with static routes. Okay, fair enough. You were in the uh, you, were, you you saw the menus, so uh, you know that that that's uh, you know I'm not I I I'm not after. Wireshark level people, cause, um, not 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 that Wireshark's bad. It's just the 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 you know you know the role that you're looking for, and you right. you know like, but you know uh, it allows me to very quickly merge what what their ambition is. I guess that's the big one I'm looking for. I don't like like Michael, and I'm picking on him because I can. <laughs> um, is that he had a ton of ambition, like. Yes. To, to, I mean, and, and I, I have no numbers and I have no facts, but I think he was probably the only one out of the group of mm, 40 or maybe 40 people were there. I think he was the only one that got the certification. Wow. That, so, that, that's probably common when it comes to those boot camps. When it comes to boot camps. Yeah, I think I, 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 I could kind of tell by the people like they're you know when you read the people that yeah. uh that they didn't uh uh it wasn't for them <laughs> but but I, I i remember him sitting over there to my to my left so uh uh he did i don't think he actually came up and said hi but he shifted everything i was doing yeah uh, he was soaking up so. that information mike was going to soak up that information yep yeah 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 and um <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's uh, uh, even from a, a a person first getting in. A person, uh, if you don't keep your knowledge current, you in a sense you turn into a person all over again as a brand new person. Oh, that can happen over and over too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and I'll, and I'll and I'll give you. Well, I can't give it just to you, but I'll give it to everybody. I guess since we're doing this on YouTube. Um. The the one imp and the guys that I've hired, um, they and, and they're like, oh my gosh, here it comes Neil. Okay, I go. Nobody knows you from your previous company, so you have one chance to reboot everything that you're doing at every new position that you go to. Mm -hmm. So use that. So you you may have had a a. a a poor it, it's it's all subjective you may have had a poor uh, study uh habit because you didn't have the physical time at your new as part of your you get three hours a week to study uh on on whatever you want you know, every every new position, nobody knows you from your previous position. Use it as a time to reboot yourself into your new position. And 
you know, some do, some don't. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I try to use that as my uh, uh, springboard as to what I liked and what I didn't like from my previous job uh, I, or position. I try to, to redo it uh, or make sure that I'm with the kinds of people that would let me do it. You know, it's more than just um, learning new things. It's learning how to re make yourself better. Yes, I, I agree wholeheartedly with that, Neil. Um, man, it, I got so many questions that I want to ask. <laughs> it's, it's, well, it's, like I said, I, I'm, I'm just about at every uh, every uh, <laughs> conference except Comic Con. I can't get VMware to send me to Comic Con, <laughs> man. But it's, uh, <laughs> we, need we need to change that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 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 on me. I, I I just haven't been crafty enough to figure one out, yeah. but uh, figure a way it's uh, to make that happen. But uh, yeah, like I said, um, like I said, I could. I, I, so I'm not a career coach, but I've been doing this, uh, helping folks out for for decades now. So. Um, you know, it's, 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 you know, just trying to help. Yes. So there's three things I want to touch before we wrap this up. Okay. The first one, when you mentioned about the resumes, one of the things that I didn't hear you say was degrees or certifications. It, and you did mention that you more of a culture fit mm -hmm. and um, ambition. So yep. how important are certifications and degrees? Well, there's okay. There's 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 actually a I, I do uh, certifications and I actually have a business degree. Okay. So uh, uh, maybe I, I, I and I'll give you my story and then I'll give you what you're asking for because there's a bit of a story that goes behind it. I'll tell you why I picked a business degree. Uh, and again, people that know me are like, oh my gosh, you're telling this story again. <laughs> I I was I was I think I was 17 because I. I, I uh, uh, went to college like straight away. I walked into, and I knew a lot of computer stuff at that time. I, I knew, I, I knew probably more than, uh, or I thought I knew more. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so I, I walk into the, uh, uh, to the dean's office because I was evaluating, you know, the computer science, computer information science, and there was, there was a few others. And I walk in, and he goes, "Yes, it, it, I am, you know, I am the dean," and you know, so after you get your, your bachelor's degree, then after you get your master's degree, you can do your PhD. And this guy turns around and points at boxes of punch cards. Mm. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm on five and a quarter floppies. This guy's <laughs> ancient. <laughs> so uh, that's, uh, he didn't keep his skill set up. So it, it gives you a point of reference, like uh, C, C is C of the world around. Uh, so from a degree perspective, uh, uh, to me, a degree actually has um, and it's something that you never thought of. But a degree to me, you're able to live on your own family and get things done with on your own, with your own mind, you were able to get stuff done in a in a in a fairly controlled environment. Right. Now, if your degree is like a hundred years old, like mine, uh, you know that doesn't matter. But if I've got myself a a, a a 22, 23, 24 year old that's just coming out, that actually plays a factor in that they got their they got their degree uh, and you know they they followed through on it. So they were, and they were able to, and it, again, the wonders of uh, wonders of LinkedIn. You can see a lot of times where they lived and where they got their degree. Right. So if I look at it and like, oh, well, they're three or four hours away from home uh, when they got it, that that changes my mindset to go. They were able to to live on their own right. and and work with other people, have a roommate for the first time, you know. Stuff like that. They they've got their people skills, you know, the, uh, that stuff. Um, when it comes to the certifications, a lot of times I I look for uh, if they were looking for skill overlap. Hmm. So, uh, so, like for mine, they go 
you know, why do you have all of them? <laughs> so <laughs> so I, 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 uh, I walk them through it. I said, first I did route switch. I got very, very good at it. Uh, then I saw that security had 33, 40% overlap with it. Hmm. So I took all of my skill set and I didn't want to get old on my skill set. So then I slapped uh, security right on top of that. Right. So it overlapped like that. <laughs> so it, it, I, I uh, got my year in, got, uh, uh, got the security one. Uh, communications and services is what service provider was originally called. Right. Uh, so I was like, my, my next market that I wanted to get into was service provider. So I went and then I did the whole blueprint again and took that and I go, wait a minute, it kind of doesn't have as much security on it, but shoot, that route switch is again, another 30%. Right. So uh, what I'm actually doing right now is, I'm actually walking you through when somebody asks me on an interview why you have so many darn certifications. Right. So it, I'm giving you the story on how one builds on top of another. It makes so, sense. Yeah. And, and that way you can give them a chance or you said if I slowed down and, you know, gave you a chance to say something if, you know, you <laughs> well, I'm talking to you yeah. would. But uh, uh, that would give the interview person a point of reference that, Oh, tell me a little bit more about blah, blah, like IPsec tunnels, you know, because of the security. Well, let's talk about those things. You want to hear about them over GRE? Do you want to hear about them over, <laughs> over GRE, under GRE? What, what, what area do you want to, oh, I really want you to tell me about, you know, why you would use phase one over phase two. And then right there, I'm like, oh, we're starting to get a little academic here. Uh, I don't know if he's trying to stump the chump or not. So I would come back and say, well, you know, phase one is, is pretty much, I mean, phase one, <laughs> Ike version one uh, is pretty much gone. We use Ike version two because of this in phase one and phase two. Mm -hmm. And and then you've pretty much redirected the question so it wasn't a stump the chump interview question on breaking down the minutia of one versus the other. And that was all in the blueprint from your certification. You right. see, so right. you're using your certification to, okay, if they ask, uh, I had IPsec on my resume, so that's valid. I want to make sure that it stays here, here, and here. So I, and I, so I've labbed it a few times. So then I have that experience to talk about it. Right. Yeah. So know what's on your resume when you go into a Neil, uh, <laughs> an interview with Neil, know what's on your resume. Ah. <laughs> Oh, oh, look, uh, it, it's all about the job. Okay. There's, there's another guy going, Oh no, he's going to talk about me. Okay. Um, I had, I had a, 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 a I, I was, a, he didn't, he doesn't work for me, but I, I was part of the interview process and I go, look, I'm not here to tell you how smart I am. You know, my mom's already told me that. What I want you to do is, uh, uh, give me a presentation on anything. Give me a give me a 30 minute presentation on your last major project. Hmm. And he was like, that's all you want? And he goes, yep, that's all I want. I can do that right now. This was, well, then let's do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and he pulled it up and he got the job. I mean, he just walked through it and then dug in a couple of sections, came back up because for, for his particular role, it was more important on his customer facing and his personality, his, his, his ability to, uh, to go with the flow. Uh, he, had, uh, he had the certifications, he had the background. I just needed to, uh, you know, and, I, and he probably figured it out within five minutes. I was able to pull everything out of his resume through, through that 30 minute uh, PowerPoint presentation. Right. Yeah, I had, nope. actually had to do that in San Francisco, and I got a job the same way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's really, it's, it's the, um, um, uh, and I, and I, uh, uh, it, it, the worst thing a person could do in an interview, uh, see, is, because I don't do, is if I start hearing this while they're, while they're, uh, uh, oh. while they're in the middle of the interview, the Google. Um, I think they're Googling. Yeah. So um, one of the other ones, and 
I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sneaky guy. So um, <laughs> uh, one of the questions that I ask is absolutely, without a doubt, blatantly wrong. I mean, we're talking 100% wrong. <laughs> um, uh, it would be like, yeah, I mean, Google runs on port 8080. You know, or, and, and it's like, and, and they, it, from there, uh, I find out whether they, because that's very difficult to Google. Uh, uh, but if you actually like look at your screens, you know that it's 443. Right. And I wait for that correction to go, well, maybe when Google started, they were using port 80 or some other port, you know, being the night, doing the nice, nice personal correction there. But now they use uh, 443, which is for HTTPS. And as a matter of fact, they actually use TLS, TLS 1.3. Well, you know, throwing a, throwing a little extra, you know, right. on top. <laughs> And it was like, you know, it, it, that that question has one, it was, a, like I said, it was a totally wrong question, but I wanted to see how they could technically correct it without either side feeling like they're dumb, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and if they can, if they can, if they, if they can do that, th then they can actually take it as deep as they want, you know, before it rabbit holes uh, uh, into certificates and certificate chains and all of that, but it allows them to, to pull it towards things that, uh, uh, you know, that they, that they use, but it, by having a totally wrong question or, or my actual, um, my, my most devastating question is I actually have no idea about this particular SDN thing. Can you tell me what you've done with it in the last, you know, six months? Mm. And they can take it however they want. <laughs> now, if they if they if they've done their research, uh, they would know that I'm flat out lying right there. <laughs> 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 but but if they haven't done their research, um, then uh, you know it, uh, it it gives a question that uh, you know can be taken taken any any way, uh, and, and it also helps me to pull them into what it would be like to work with them on a daily basis. Right, yeah. right. Hey, hey, Neil, you are like <laughs> the most awesome person ever. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean that. I don't mean, I, I've always liked this. I, I see, look, see, I'm, I'm already two cups of coffee in. So. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm serious, I'm serious. Um, the fact that you honestly admit that you act, you give people wrong questions or the, you know the wrong answers that's just because i know people that call me like man he asked me this question and it was wrong and they're mad about it <laughs> <laughs> right 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 I, I it's one of the ones i mean it comes up it's like what was it uh oh yeah it was like uh uh i i had an interview a gazillion years ago i was like yeah, man, I, I've been running uh, SMTP through port 22 for like years <laughs> and it works all over the internet. <laughs> and, the, and the guy goes, well, well you, you must be running a custom version of send mail to be able to do that because it normally runs on 25. <laughs> oh, really? What version of send mail? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, he, he corrected me, corrected me nicely. I threw in my confirming question, and uh, you know he got that job. I, I I wasn't his hiring manager. I was part of the interview process. But uh, uh, you know, it's it, 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 I've been using that that tactic forever. But um, uh, yeah, it, it's one of the ones that I want to know how you know they they know what's wrong. Right. Now I want you to tell me it's wrong, <laughs> and nicely, you know. <laughs> So, yeah, I've had the one that is like, you're 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 an idiot. Are you like a manager or something? It's actually running on port twenty. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> so so here's a question, yep. and I think this will be our last question of the night. Okay. <laughs> you mentioned that your. Um, let me make sure I ask it correctly. You're a geek technical and a people manager. Mm -hmm. How do you maintain your geek technical um, 
when you are now a director? Hire smart people. Hmm. <laughs> so yeah. at one point you have eight CCIEs. Mm -hmm. At what point did you decide the geek technical was behind you and now you're going to manage people? <laughs> well, that's the thing is that uh, remember I mentioned that part about being able to reboot. Right. I'm I, I'm geek technical and people manager because mm. I can do that. <laughs> so I uh, I I because uh, I rebooted and I said no 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 I I it, it, there's there's a thing right it's it, it it's one of the ones where they go do you want to be a people manager or do you want to be an engineer and I go well I know it doesn't happen too often but could we try both and if and if one doesn't work you know then I'll then I'll fade one way or fade the other and you know and. And I mean, they, they throw so many safety nets. I mean, if you, if you, if, you know, helping people out is not working, you know, you can come back to individual contributor and stuff like that. But what I found is that, uh, being able to work as a team, uh, I, 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 I pick up so much stuff. Uh, I mean, you, 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 we've, we've got people on the team that were, that were Marines. Uh, I, you, you were Air Force and thank you for your service, by the way. See, I, I, I looked you up too, right? <laughs> uh, but but the, um, the 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 stuff that they are able to bring um, is uh, uh, like a concept that you never would have thought of uh, before. So it's like, you know, I'm I'm definitely not one of those folks that say I've been doing it this way for 20 years, uh, even though some of these protocols have actually existed that long. Uh, but it's it, it, one of the things is, and like I said, I, this is the longest, this is the long, long answer to a short question, I guess, is that um, uh, I make sure to slice my day where I don't mix the people managing with the technical. So like my day starts at about 4.30 in the morning, right yeah, about there, because I, I deal a lot with the other side of the world. So uh, I'll be doing technical, and then I'll switch over to helping uh, whatever I need to from the the people people management side. Uh, it's really a, it's it's really great to be able to help develop your your folks. Uh, like I know what their ambitions are, and we like okay, uh, you know let's 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 put a couple people together, and uh, uh, one one has a lot of experience it, it's um it, it's like this uh, say that you're like the smartest guy in the whole wide world and your car breaks down in the middle of nowhere and this mechanic comes who at that point in time is the smartest person in the world <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's not me <laughs> so you know it, it, and that's the thing is that the the by having the 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 different levels and different types of people that you you, you pick up and you take each other's skill sets and you're like i never thought of doing it that way and it just goes all together and uh you, you have people that may like to do it manually every time you got people that like to automate every single time but if you do it manually every time you pick up a skill set of being able to walk into just about everything oh that's broken your cable's broken blah 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 I've, oh i've seen a transistor or a transceiver you know blasted a million times with people that have automated it they never see any of that stuff Exactly. So um, again, back to your, uh, you know, my terribly long-winded answer here no. is the uh, uh, I, I'm still doing both, but I really, really try to separate the the two. Uh, so I'm not people managing somebody at the same time that we're working on a project uh, to yeah. to to roll out. It's uh, uh, I uh, very frequently don't refer to myself as a mate or teammates you know it's, uh, uh, and then and then if I need to do you know all of the hiring manager then that too but again I got a chance to reboot 
when I moved uh, from my technical role to the director role, so I took full advantage of the uh, <laughs> of the reboot. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if it, it uh, so far, I, when did I switch? I'd have to look on LinkedIn to see. I put the, I put the date when I switched. I think it was like October, November or something. And it's February now. So, uh, all in all, it's been nothing but a fantastic experience being able to, uh, uh, make sure that I don't do the cool, sexy projects. Uh, you know, those, uh, you know, I got plenty of team members, you know, I'm not there to be, to be the manager so that I get first dibs on all the cool stuff. Yeah, that's you the know, yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I, uh, you know, we, we mix it together and it's like, you know, some skill sets, uh, you know, or it's not actually skill sets, it's actually allocation of people. Right. So we're, 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 we are so, uh, and, and I don't like the word busy because it, it, uh, it's not what it is, is that we're so engaged on so many different accounts right. that you have to, and this is, a, this is where the people side comes in, is that you're so engaged in all of these accounts that you're able to make sure that the, that the people that are helping don't get overloaded. Um, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll leave this question with this one analogy. And then uh, back when I was in school, um, every, every high school teacher didn't actually know what any other teacher was, was giving you for homework. Mm. So you would end up with, with, with eight, eight hours of homework a night from right. each one of the teachers. And, and it was just so overwhelming. And that kind of happens in our field that if you um, don't, know what's going on uh people get overloaded with too much stuff and right. one of the things that i try to really really help with is uh making sure that the i i know what the tasks are and i and i got a good idea what the skill level and how long it takes to do it and that's the part that kind of gets lost is uh, uh, from a, a person that is non-technical doesn't have the aspect of how long it takes to do something <laughs> So uh, they were like, oh, yeah, you know, set up a router, put BGP on it, and, uh, and, and hook it up. Well, just wiring is going to take me two days because it happens to have a 1,000 ports. You know, they don't <laughs> – because you know, they're like, well, a switch is a switch, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, they don't realize it's like, oh, my gosh, you know. But it's like, okay, we're putting in a – we're putting in a, a you know, a just what, a 9K, a big old monster, oh. uh, Cisco 9K. Uh, or no, the, the long one, the 22, 20, not the 20, oh, I'm forgetting my model numbers. They're, it's like, it's like 11 U. It's a monster. It's like a thousand ports if you have it all out, but it, it, you won't put that in, in an afternoon. But if you don't know like your hardware, the skill, the, how everybody else is allocated, uh, then you may put something with somebody that, it, it, you, you know, you take a one U switch to an 11 you switch and uh, think it takes the same amount of time. So that from a people manager side is another thing uh, that I uh, try to, and we don't do a lot of switches unless it, uh, hey, if it comes up, it comes up. But, uh, uh, you know, it, but it is, is, a, is a point of, uh, is a point of reference. Uh, and then that's, that's the other, that's the fantastic part about being a, a people manager and, and being able to reboot your, your stuff is I'm not going to let, the man, you know, the, the, some of the folks I've worked for before absolutely just bombard you because they don't realize how long it takes to do. Man, so. you sound like you would be an awesome manager to work for. Kind of similar to a few I had in my career. It's more of an um, empower that would empower me to maximize my abilities and then also um, look out for me to make sure that I'm not being burnt out and overwhelmed. Right. Exactly, and that's and, and if you uh, went down the people manager route, that that I mean, you borrow from you know you, you know it doesn't come out of the air, right. but you borrow from the best features that you saw from from all of your previous managers, and go, yeah, if I get a chance to reboot, this is what I'm going to use. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I did. <laughs> I, I like that reboot. That's a major takeaway. Whenever you're going into a new position, know that it's a new opportunity for you to. <clears throat> yeah, you can switch from coffee to tea. Nobody's going to know. <laughs> 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 uh, 
you know, it can be as minor as that, you know, it's like, yeah. well, at my previous job, I went to the gym for, you know, uh, at, at seven o'clock at night, every night, you know, so then they don't keep you at night, you know, they, you, you kind of counter that, that bit where you know, they, they make me work 16 hours a week and, you know, I'm going to get fried and then you just say, Hey, you know, when you're doing, you've already got the job, so to speak, you're just kind of working the details out. You know, it's like, Hey, you know, I'm, I just want to make sure I have my my yoga class or something. I don't do yoga, as you can tell. But uh, I have my yoga class uh, at seven o'clock at night, and uh, you know, then you put that down and you actually do it because you're rebooting your yourself. You're going. I I would not. I would I, I would drive right by the gym every day. You know, that's what you're thinking. But if I get another job, I think I will go to the gym every day. And there you go. You put in that spot, reboot it. That's true. That's true. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in to this video. Hey, Neil, mm -hmm. I want to thank you as well for coming on the channel, sharing your wealth of knowledge. Is there anything you want to say before we're out of here? Uh, just to recap a little bit, uh, get your uh, make a map of what you're wanting to do. Very similar to going for a certification. Uh, make sure what you're that, that's what you're doing that you are a culture fit for where you're going because you know that's that that makes it so that you're happy where, where you want to go um if and i'm gonna just pick on michael one last time as we outro here uh try to follow his example he's uh, 14 15 now yeah. he he was very passionate and stuck with it i mean if you want somebody that went from like i think i want to do this to actually like well on his way uh building experience doing the lab being social uh on the network so when hr looks him up he's he's got a long history he's doing all this stuff right uh if you're looking for a model to follow for somebody that's uh come, starting to do this uh you know from the from the very very beginning yes i agree i agree thanks neil yeah